Hi everybody, I uh, just wanted to do a weekly review of the stock market, uh, including the Thursday and Friday here. Uh, and basically you can see that uh, quite a lot of changes happen on Thursday and Friday. Um, we almost had a doubling of the volume, um, so there's a lot, of, lot more volume on uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, you can see about a 5.6% move um, in total. So at the start of the week, um, you know, we were basically up here uh, and we dropped uh, down into uh, this land. So basically that was about a 4% drop um, just to get the week started. Uh, you know, you can see, uh, you can measure that from the VWAP here perhaps, or you can measure it from another way. But um, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of drop, maybe if you measure it from here. So it's basically about uh, 1% drop or so from there. So most of the trading uh, this past week took uh, trades about uh, just about 36.11 uh, for the S&P 500 uh, E-mini. Um, you can see most of the trades are right around that level. So you can see uh, basically the semiconductor sector really getting hit hard this past week as well as software application. And you can see many of these software companies down 10%, 15% for the week. Uh, and then semiconductor companies also down 10%, uh, but not quite 15%. So these, uh, really the main the main problem was really in software application, uh, really getting a big hit this past week. Kind of see the other sectors here, uh, you know, the basically the technology getting uh, pretty badly hurt, uh, real estate kind of getting uh, hit here, uh, and then oil and gas a little bit, um, and then uh, healthcare doing pretty good. Uh, overall and banks as well doing pretty good so in terms of sectors here you can see uh, pretty much healthcare being the best for this past week um, and uh, right here uh, consumer cyclical doing the worst um, with uh, Amazon Tesla um, and some others uh, and then you can also see technology kind of uh, having some bad spots in here um, with uh, some down to 15% or more like we discussed Couple of airline companies also of note uh, doing pretty good here. You can see American Airlines, uh, Delta uh, having a pretty good week, 5%, um, and almost 8% here for American Airlines. And as well as a food company over here, Kraft doing pretty well, uh, up about 8%, uh, Pepsi up 5%, uh, Altria Group up quite a bit as well. I was uh, kind of surprised to see how far down PayPal went this past week, 10% uh, over here. Uh, so that's not so great. So in terms of mostly most traded with average volume, you can see Tesla and Nvidia uh, having most trades out here um, and also kind of doing uh, not so great. Uh, Sophie Technologies as well and Vinco. So kind of in the middle of all this was a down by 2.4 percent was Microsoft um, so you can see they were down for the week um, and you can see by far though Tesla was uh, even worse um, but uh, basically Microsoft uh, being uh, having some struggles too uh, so here you can kind of see the force levels um, for the week um, you can see that we started off pretty negative here kind of dried down a little bit negative and then got a little bit of positivity uh, on Tuesday so and then Wednesday was pretty flat, um, hard to say, but kind of negative. Um, it's hard to see the details on the force vectors here, but <laughs> there's actually some positive and negative, but mostly negative uh, for the day. Uh, and then a start of the negative to uh, Thursday, um, and then with a pretty high comeback. So this was like one of the highest we've seen uh, in a very long time. So we saw a lot of force uh, on the positive side on Thursday uh, and then a lot of force on the negative side on Friday so that pretty much canceled it out um, it was a little bit more forceful on the positive side uh, on Thursday uh, but maybe the start of the week um, was just uh, bad and then the, if you take the sum of these five days um, you basically net a negative uh, for the week including the negative downtrend here so that was kind of the sum uh, for the week so Kassik shows uh, pretty much all the interesting stuff going on um, with Thursday and Friday uh, you can kind of see the peaks here so we did have a peak here and then we had a kind of a second peak uh, later that night um, after hours so 
that peaked here um, and then kind of tailed off uh, after um, about midnight. So you can see midnight there and then it just dropped and then it came back again to another peak here. Um, so that's stochastic. Um, you can see earlier in the week we saw a pretty flat week um, on Wednesday, um, kind of in the middle here range, not pretty choppy, bad trading day. Um, and then uh, on Monday and Tuesday we had a pretty good, pretty easy trading day on on Tuesday, including an up and a down move here. So that was pretty uh, straightforward uh, for the most part. Um, and then a pretty serious down move. Um, on Monday. In terms of the volume, um, it actually was pretty choppy uh, volume-wise, uh, both on, it wasn't so choppy, but there's a, kind of a negative part and then a positive part uh, for Monday. Um, this was uh, a little bit more uh, confusing because we had in the middle of the day there was kind of a positive streak. Um, heading up pretty high on Tuesday um, and the volume kind of shows that there with the volume kind of being negative um, and maybe even summing up more negative so and then uh, Wednesday being pretty complicated um, almost all day but what there was that one positive volume spike right here um, at 9 30 in the morning so that was pretty positive um, right there um, but the next uh, other mornings were all negative you can see so except for uh, on Wednesday when it looked pretty positive right at the start of the day there a uh, direct sampling of the volume you can kind of see down here now um, and most of the negative volume being right here at the end of the week and at the start of the week so we basically had the middle part of the week uh, kind of balanced off so this might mean for a negative next week uh, possibly so overall volatility is increasing um, you can see that the last couple of days it definitely did increase um, and that could mean even more volatile weeks uh, to come uh, next week so we could see uh, you know if there's a 12 point move here that's basically 3.5 percent move next week so that's a pretty big day um, potentially next week um, but more likely um, is perhaps at least a few days uh, around the 11 point days so 11 point day is about three percent move so we're seeing about a three point three percent move next week is going to be pretty common um day which is actually quite a big day uh, when you think about it so interestingly the weekly level um is in terms of volatility is about at a 24 25 so if we take that and measure that we're basically talking about a 7% or 6% move for the week. So also with standard deviation, you can see uh, that we have been increasing uh, this past week uh, in terms of standard deviation uh, in the stock market price. So basically we're about 18 right now for one standard deviation. Um, that's about maybe 5% or so. Let's just measure that out here, 18, yeah, it's 5%. So, um, but uh, basically, uh, that could continue to rise. It looks like we're continuing to rise. It's going to maybe fall part of the week and then maybe rise again. It could. So we don't know really, um, but we do see these definite cycles uh, in standard deviation uh, kind of showing up here. I think what everyone's kind of asking over the next week is what's going to happen to the force here? Are we going to continue on? Are we going to kind of decrease? So we kind of have a range here, right? So we have, uh, you know, it could be not quite as bad, uh, maybe as uh, what we saw in uh, June. Um, we saw this big jump here um, down in June. So we probably won't see that. Um, and we probably won't see a positive force of any significance, maybe a little bit. Um, so we've seen a couple spikes Maybe it's possible to see maybe a bigger spike um, next week, a positive, but um, you know, with the early earnings reports here uh, and some of the CPI numbers not looking super great, um, who knows, that may be still negative land for quite some time. And quite some time of negative land basically means from here to, oh man, what happened here, sorry about that. So if we measure this, uh, we can kind of see that this measurement would be about from here to here on um, so that's approximately into uh, January of the start of the year um, that we should start to see maybe some more positive signs 
uh, maybe next year. So uh, that would take some time. Um, so we still have quite a number of months uh, to go through uh, before we see that uh, upswing. At the same time, though, we're starting to see an RSI that's quite low here. Um, how much lower can it go is one of the questions. So, you know, if we see a bounce, we might see a bounce here uh, in uh, November, um, which is pretty likely to see at least one bounce between now and November. Um, so according to the MACD, we should uh, for sure see some kind of bounce in this range here. So in November, um, there should be some curve around of some sort. We should see some green candles here on the uh, chart, um, but we just don't see them yet. So we're kind of just waiting for a little bit of a turnaround here. So we are seeing maybe a little bit letting off of some of the negativity that we have seen. Um, on the volume side of things. So you can see we have, uh, you know, basically gone back to zero land here on the volume um, and kind of gotten uh, to a point where we're at uh, kind of a middle ground um, and maybe even an inflection point of some sort. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review of the stock market. Uh, let me know if you got any questions. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'd be glad to talk with you about any details. Thanks. See you.